Howdy, y'all. Thank you for joining us today for this playthrough of Marvel Champions, the card game, Mutant Genesis. This is the second playthrough as I just finished doing the Shadow Cat one. And what I like to do is take the decks unchanged. So this is the Colossus one unchanged and put them up against. Normally I do it against Rhino, but because of flavor here, I decided to go ahead and just do the exact same deck I did with um, Shadow Cat, where it's going to be Sabretooth as the villain. And instead of just doing some randoms in there, I decided just to make it super flavored, where it's just going to be basically Colossus versus the Brotherhood of Mutant of Evil Mutants because or Brotherhood of Mutants because. The Brotherhood, I just feels like if I'm doing X-Men, it should be against the Brotherhood. Yeah, the Sentinels, I really wanted to mix in, maybe randomly, but I just wanted to keep it with the flavor. So if this is your first time to ever watch one of my videos, what you're going to see is I'm going to go through the first, te I'm going to teach through the first round as I play. That way, if you're first time and you want to see if this is your style of game and you want to play it, then you can at least kind of follow along through the rest of the teach and kind of understand what's going on. If you've watched me before, thank you for joining again. Um, sorry, you got to be bored through the little beginning stuff, but sometimes in those, because of the way these decks play different, we do hit some differences. Um, if you watch my unboxing, you probably know I am anxious to play this. This is one of my favorite, Colossus is one of my favorite X-Men from when I was a kid. Um, really anxious to build with him too because of cards that allow you to have in your decks because of 14 hit points so anxious to see what I could do with those but um enough jibber jabbering and talking let's get right into the play Colossus has a special setup and we'll talk about that I'll shuffle up the villain deck while I am teaching so what we're gonna do here is Sabretooth here is trying to eliminate Robert Kelly. So first he's going to be stalking him. So our job's going to be, and I know how this works now because I did it with the Shadow Cat thing. Um, so I know kind of, it won't be a learning experience on this so much. Basically, we're trying to find the Senator. Sabretooth's trying to find the Senator also and finish him off. So we got to try to get to the Senator and long story short, Sabretooth's trying to knock out Robert Kelly. We got to try to find the Senator and protect him long enough for us to knock out Sabretooth two times. He's got two stages here. We got to try to knock him out twice. His first stage, he's going to get 13 hit points per player. So since I'm solo in 13 and then his second stage, he'll get 15 hit points per player. So let's throw that on there. So he gets 13 hit points. So we got to knock him out before he knocks out Robert Kelly or knocks us out. And let's make sure we got everything set up right on the villain. So let's go to this stalk by Sabretooth. Like I said, I just went with the setup it shows here, which is basically against the Brotherhood because it says Sabretooth and standard set. We got the Sabretooth and standard set and then two modular sets, the Brotherhood and Mystique. I do Mystique in since she was a Brotherhood. So, like I said, it's us versus the Brotherhood. Set up, put the Find the Senator in the play, which we did. It's going to get five threat on there per player. And since we're just finishing out this whole thing, it said put it in play. It just says Robert Kelly cannot be healed by player card effects and cannot have upgrades attached to him. And then... When we defeat this, so when we get rid of all the threat off this scheme, the first player detaches Robert Kelly from the scheme and takes control of him. And then we're going to advance to 2A, which you can already kind of see here, and flip this card and place it next to the main scheme. So yeah, Robert Kelly gets 9 hit points, and I know I'm putting the damage counters on there. And it's because I like to do the damage counters. I like to have counters. I need to get some health counters. That's what I need to do. But I like to put the counters on it. That way I know where I'm at and just remove stuff. But anyway, so that's putting all that into play. That's all ready to go. Um, Robert Kelly says, like I said, we're going to gain him when it's knocked out. And it just says the first player gains control of him. Has 
He does not count against your ally limit because you normally have an ally limit of three, so he's not going to restrict your ally limit. And he cannot have player cards attached to him. Um, long story short, also, Force Interrupt, when an enemy resolves an uh, undefended attack against you, deal that damage to Robert Kelly. That means once I get control of him and I'm protecting him, if I don't defend against any attacks, the damage goes straight to Robert Kelly. Um... All right, so that was all putting all that into play and talking about Robert Kelly, which doesn't really matter right now. But just to let you know, that's what the cards go through. Uh, he is in play, but under no player's control right now. So he's still going to be targeting stuff. Now we flip this over. It has a forced response that after the resolving of step one. So step one of the villain phase is adding threat to the scheme. And we'll get to that more detail later. But what it's saying is when you go to add threat to this scheme, uh, you deal two damage to Robert Kelly. So he can be damaged and possibly taken out before we find him. And if there's six threat per player on here, so if there's six threat because we're solo, he does three damage instead. While Robert Kelly's attached to find the senator, treat his box text as blank. So just let you know his box text is blank. Until we find him. Uh, if Robert Kelly leaves play, the players lose the game. So, we got to make sure he don't get knocked out. All right. So, like I said, we got to try to knock out Sabretooth twice before he finds the senator and knocks him out. Well, basically, before he knocks out the senator, which he's got nine hit points. Or if, if Sabretooth manages to knock us out. I think I've lost the game more times than not. When I lose, it's usually because they pull off their scheme. So, But there's sometimes with Rhino or some big boy, he's going to knock you out. There's nothing you can do about it. All right, so we have the setup now. We've shuffled enough. Let's just go ahead and put that down. So now we got to do the setup for our stuff. And the first thing we do is we draw up to our max hand size, which is 6. Oh, and we're also at 14 hit points, not 9. So 14 hit points. And then we draw a hand size of six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then now we get a mulligan. And a mulligan is we could discard any number of cards we want to from our hand. And then after we discard, so say I discarded these two, we would draw up to our max hand size back up to six. And this is a way to, basically, if you have some late game stuff, it's just a way of basically get rid of late game cards for more cards down the road. I'm not taking the mulligan. Now I'm just going to decide if I'm going to go search and go get a second organic steel. Which it's not unique, so that means I can have multiple. Actually, I am going to take a mulligan. Because this card only lets it remove threat from the main scheme. And it's four threat from the main scheme. We have no threat on the main scheme. So I'm going to I'm gonna mulligan and discard that one. And this one, since I have no allies in hand, this only lets me beef up an X-Men ally. Which I thought about discarding this one too, because it only lets me put an X-Men ally into play. But... I'm hoping that if I discard two, maybe I'll discard or maybe I'll draw an X-Men ally. So we're going to keep these four cards in hand. And now since we're doing our mulligan, we get to draw two cards. Did not draw an X-Men ally, but that's our mulligan. So we can't do another one. And then now we are going to go search for another organic steel. Which I think there were only two, so... There's an organic steel. So we're going to shuffle. Alright, that should be more than enough shuffles. Alright, so... Just in case... The reason I was able to go get another organic steel, because the setup is taking place after the mulligan. It said, search your deck for a copy of organic steel and add it to your hand. So I get to start with seven cards, actually, in my starting hand at the beginning of the game. Alright. So now we can let the game begin. It starts 
the beginning of the round, and the round is you all the uh, hero players' turns, and then that ends the hero phase, and then we'll go into the villain phase. The villain will do all their stuff, and then that'll be the end of a round. We are the first player, but we're also the only player, so we're not. So we just have the first player marker, but it's not going to switch, which is what happens later, and we'll talk about that. We're not going to switch because we are the only player, and we are considered the first player. All right. I'm just going to put this here because why not? You can make it look like he's talking, right? Anyways, so the game begins, and on the hero for a turn, a hero phase, the first player basically gets to do actions. Some of the actions you can do are, one action is, once per turn, you can flip your identity card from Alter Ego to Hero, or from Hero to Alter Ego, and vice versa. So, I'm going to use my first one to go ahead and flip Colossus to his hero side. And if you look, it says Colossus has can have... What that's going to do, it's going to change my basic abilities, which we'll get into because I'm going to use them. And then it's also giving me a new ability down here. Like the ability I had down here was when I flip to this form, I get to shuffle a Colossus card, which is going to have his picture down here at the bottom, back into my deck. But then also... Yeah, so that's what he does. But it's only when I flip to that other side. So now my ability is Colossus can have one additional tough status card. And we'll talk about what they are in a second here, because normally you're restricted to only having one. He can actually have two. And then Steel Skin. As a response, after you change to this form, give Colossus a tough status card. So, I switch to that form, I get a tough status card. What a tough status card is, it says the next time that character would take any amount of damage, I just discard this instead. Seems pretty good, because now I can have multiple of them. And I'm just going to put my little 3D printed one on there. So he's got one tough status on him. Another thing you can do for your turn is... You have cards in your hand. You can play cards from your hand. And the cost of playing a card from your hand is at the top of the card. So these cards are resource cards. They can't be, they don't have a cost because they're used to actually pay for these costs. Or another thing you could do to pay for the cost of a card is at the bottom of all these cards, you see there are resources. You could discard the card in order to pay to get said resource. Hence, the resource cards typically have more resources on them. Or, they have something special that you do when you play them as a resource card. Like in the case of this one, when I spin this card to play a defense event. So if it's a defense event, I get to draw a card after using this as a resource. So in this case, I want to go ahead and put an organic steel into play. It costs two to play. So I'm going to discard this resource card for two. So I paid the cost, and then now I get to put this into play. It is an upgrade, which means it's a something that attaches to a character. And then it has it's organic steel upgrade. It has uses, which says uses means, and it tells you here, put two steel counters on him. Because then you print up or get some steel or something. To play with my metal bits. But put two steel counters on him. And what uses means is if at any point there are no counters on this, this card is discarded. Alright, and as a hero response, so it means I have to be in hero form. As a response, after a tough status card is discarded from Colossus, I can exhaust this card and remove one steel counter from it to give him another tough status or give him a tough status card. So if this tough status goes away, I can exhaust this as long as I'm in hero form to get another tough status card put back on there. Seems good. Keep him toughed up. So we're going to go ahead and do that again. 
We have cost two resources. In this case, I'm not using a resource card, but I still can discard these for the two resources and put another organic steel into play with two counters on it. I mean, seems good because if he if I lose that, I can tap these and or exhaust these and put two more on him. Which he can only hold, he can hold an additional one, so seems good. Another thing you can do on your turn is called a basic ability. If you look on the side of each character, they have a basic ability on the side here. And there's something that you can do. Like, I can, if I want, I can activate these basic abilities by exhausting them and activating this basic ability depending on what I what I want to do when I act when I exhaust them. So if I exhaust Colossus, I can thwart for one if I want to. I can choose one of the schemes and thwart for that number a number of threat off of that scheme. So if I exhausted him for the thwart, I would remove one threat from a scheme. Or I can exhaust Colossus and do two damage to a villain or minion or bad guy. Or if I'm being attacked, I can exhaust Colossus and I can reduce the damage done to me, defend the damage and reduce the damage by two in this case. I'm gonna show the other side. If you're an alter ego form, you can do the same thing. You can exhaust to recover four hit points. But of course I'm not an alter ego form so I cannot do that. In this case, I'm going to exhaust Colossus and I'm going to thwart a scheme for one threat. So, there's no threat on this one, so I might as well thwart the threat off of this one. Which makes me just realize, unless Colossus has some stuff that's going to let me thwart a lot faster, Robert Kelly's going to take a lot of damage. I don't know how else to say that. He's going to take a lot of damage in this one. Once you have no actions you want to do on your hero turn, or, yeah, once you have no actions you want to do anymore, you can, at that point, go to the end of the, go to the next hero's turn. Once all the heroes have gone, you go to the end of the hero phase, which is, you can discard any number of cards from your hand. So in this case, I am going to discard this card from hand. I didn't think about it. I think I grabbed the wrong card. Yeah, I would have held on to this one and paid that with that. Might as well keep that. Well, do I even care? No, I don't have an ally. Yeah, we'll keep it. Oh. Yeah, I'm making it confusing. All it was is... I was thinking that was a defense card. It's not. Which is what I want for this thing. But Alright, so... Yeah. I was going to say I'm not taking something back, but game state didn't really change. Yeah, we're doing it. I don't care. Yeah, all it is, I just would have paid that for that instead of that. So I'm keeping these in hand, but now I have to draw, after I've decided, the first part is I can discard any cards I want to. I chose not to discard any cards then in this case, and now I can go to my hand size of four. Now remember, on the other side, it showed my hand size was six. Well, now my hand size is four. It usually reduces to five. In this case, I understand why they're giving him four. He's pretty tough. Um, all right. So that means I have two cards in hand. I get to draw two cards to get to my hand size of four. So it didn't matter all that. Ooh, I want to hold on to that. And then discarding two things anyways. Or drawing another one anyways. After you've drawn up, you, un you ready and unexhaust all your cards in your play area. And then we go to the villain phase. The first step of the villain phase is to accelerate the scheme. So he's going to look, you're going to look here. And I did not mention, this tells you how much threat, just like this told you how much threat to put on this at the beginning of the game. It started with zero. But now we are at the first step of the main phase, of the villain phase, I should say, which is add one threat per player to this thing. So one threat per player. 
because we're solo, we add one. Now, also, it has that little, it's kind of hard to make out. I could have picked it up, I guess. But it's a little start. It says a forced response that after resolving step one of the villain phase, deal two damage to Robert Kelly. Three damage instead if there are six threat per player here. Well, there's only one threat, so we do two damage to Robert Kelly. I don't know, man. We're going to have to get to him pretty fast. All right, the next step is Sabretooth, or the villain, will be activating. Now, depending on what form I am in is what, how Sabretooth will activate. If I am in Alter Ego form, then they will scheme and add more threat to the main scheme. If I am in Hero form, then they will attack. I am in Hero form. So Sabretooth will be attacking me, and now is when I have to decide if I will be defending. I am not going to defend. So, in this case, I actually just realized this is a really bad scenario for Colossus. Yeah, this is a really bad scenario for Colossus. Because I don't know if I can get... I think I can get the Robert Kelly in time and find him. I just... I don't remember there being very many ways for him to be able to get rid of threat. And if I can't really get rid of a lot of threat, then I'm supposed to try to burn him down, but I, I really didn't see a lot of huge damage. I mean, there's some huge damage in there, but not enough to where I could take down Sabretooth twice. So anyways, that's neither here nor there. We'll see how it plays out. But, alright, so I did not defend, so Sabretooth's going to attack. So he does two damage, but... Since he's the villain, he gets what's called a boost card, which means we take this card off the top of the deck and we put it in his boost cards. There's a reason because there could be ways he gets other boost cards. Once we do that, we flip all these cards over and we ignore all the cards and just look at the bottom right. So we're flipping it over and we're looking at the bottom right. So what we see here is we're counting just to look at these little symbols down here. And he gets to increase his, whatever he's doing, scheming or attacking, by whatever number of symbols are here. So he's attacking for two, three damage. I did not defend, so I would have to take three damage. But remember, I have this tough thing. So instead of taking damage, the tough status just goes away. Now, as a hero response, it tells me here that after a tough status card is discarded from Colossus, I can exhaust this card and remove one steel counter from it to give Colossus a tough status card. I'm going to choose not to do that, and it's because the card's in my hand. So once we're done with the activations, now the minions would activate in the same way, but they wouldn't get the boost cards to do any of that. There's no minions in place, so nothing happens there. So now... Oh, and I forgot to mention anyways, I couldn't have went for the threat on this anyways. I, I know I forgot to mention this crisis icon. This says I have to do everything. Like, as long as this is in play with that crisis icon there, I can never remove threat from the main scheme. Anyways, so now that there's the, we're done with that, we go to the encounter step. The encounter step is deal each player an encounter card. And just like the boost cards, there could be multiple cards. That's why you steal them out now. Because there could have been ways I got encounter cards during my hero phase. But I don't play them as soon as I get them. Which I used to do a long time ago when I played this game. It's only during the encounter phase that you do it. And I used to do that. Like I don't know if I did it on camera. But I definitely... I want to say when I first started playing. I, I just didn't realize. Oh no, you don't do these until the encounter step. But anyways. Alright, so we dealt them. Each player got one. Now we have to deal with our encounter. What encounter is it? Sabretooth Strikes. When revealed, deal one damage to Robert Kelly. You may exhaust your hero to prevent this. At this attack, defeat... Oh, it don't matter. We don't do the boost part. So this comes into that, that whole... I mean, I guess this thread has to be removed eventually. So I will just have Robert Kelly take the damage and hope. Even if I would have exhausted him, well, now I'm not going to be able to get rid of the threat, so it wasn't going to happen either way. So, might as well let the damage happen there, so that I can start removing the threat from there. With that, the last part of the villain phase is to pass this to the next player, since um, I'm the only player. We did that, and that's it.
We go back and forth until, I, until one of the conditions is met. I knocked out Sabretooth twice, or he took out Robert Kelly or KO'd me. So we go back to the beginning of my turn. Yeah, what I was saying, I got to make sure to get rid of threat in any way I can. So we're going to remove a threat off of, we're going to thwart and remove a threat off of find the senator. My next action is going to be to go to my alter ego form. And I have a response that after you change to this form, shuffle Colossus, a Colossus card from your discard pile into your deck. That's the only reason I was thinking about getting that toughness, but it ain't going to matter. There's none in there, so there's none to shuffle. Wow. I think that's going to be my turn. Um, really regret not taking that point off of there now. I just misread that. I thought that was just a response. Should have read it again. All right, so we go to the end of my hero phase. I'm going to discard these two cards. And I'm hoping to draw an ally. And then now, since we've discarded down, we have two cards in hand. We get to draw up to our hand size of six. So four more cards. One, two, three, four. Well, we kind of drew what I needed to draw. I was saying I have to draw an ally, someone who could thwart and get some of that threat off of there. So we drew up. So now we ready all of our cards. We switch to the villain phase. First thing he does is adds a threat to the scheme. And then remember, at the end of that, he's going to do two damage to Robert Kelly. And then the villain's going to activate. As he activates, I'm interrupting his activation. And it says, Alter Ego Action, uh, Alter Ego Interrupt. It's a zero-cost event, so events are a one-time play, and I do it. Alter Ego Interrupt, when the villain activates, change to your hero form. So I'm changing to my hero form. He's activated. Okay, I did just find it. It says it triggers to the imminent. So it knew imminently he was about to activate. Interrupts is what I'm should I should use my uh, words. Interrupts even look at that it's imminently happening. So it's saying when the villain goes to activate, I'm like, oh yeah, boom, he's running in and armoring up. So it does do the way I was thinking. Remember when I switch, he has a response that after you change his form, give Colossus a tough status card. I should really learn to read my cards. I would have I would cared about this one because. The whole point was for me to get an ally into play. But if you read the last part of this, it has to declare that ally as a defender, which means they could just end up knocked out. So I regret doing all that crap earlier. So now, he's activating. So Sabretooth is attacking. I have to choose if I am defending. I'm going to choose not to defend. So he's going to do two plus his... Oh, you know what I didn't do with him last time? I mean, it wouldn't have mattered, but we still have to do it because it would have progressed the deck. But last time when Sabretooth activated and he attacked, and it would have changed because that means this wouldn't have been my card, but he would have actually... I forgot to do his forced response. That after Sabretooth activates against you, discard the top card of the encounter deck, heal damage from Sabretooth equal to the boost icons. Which means he wouldn't have healed for anything anyways, but it means this wouldn't have been the card, which wouldn't have put me in the situation. But we can't go backwards. But what we can do is at least make sure, because there's a problem if this deck runs out. Bad things happen. So, all we're going to do is just discard this card. Because he would have healed, but he was at max, so it didn't matter. But now, now we've had to do that, because there would have been one less card in the deck. Now he is activating, and he's going to attack for two. Alright, now since this is a boost, that means we have to do the boost ability here, because he's boosting this. So boost, if this attack defeats an ally, place two threat on the main scheme. Well, it's not defeating an ally because I'm the one to defend it and I'm not an ally, I'm a hero. So he's just doing only two damage. And I'm going to put this up here so we don't forget to heal him this time or progress that deck. Once again, I have toughness, so this goes away. This time I'm not going to forget and I'm going to go ahead and trigger this to get rid of one of these counters. Do put a toughness counter on me. 
So the reason I didn't do that last time is I thought I was going to be able to play that one card, which is going to put a toughness counter on me. And then when I flip back into hero form, I was going to get another toughness counter. And then I would have too many toughness counters. So I was just like, and I thought I had something else. I was, anyways, learn to read your cards and you won't make mistakes like stupid stuff like I just did. I'm also going to hit, hit this one with a hero response, which will put another toughness counter on me because I don't plan on going back into alter ego form anytime soon. So there we go. And normally you cannot have two toughness counters on him, but Colossus has an ability that does allow him to have another toughness counter on him. Those were all triggered. So now Sabretooth heals for two. He's at full. Doesn't matter. We just got to make sure to do that because if this deck runs out, it progresses this faster. So we only did that. It just sucks because it means that wouldn't have happened. What would have happened? Oh, he would have attacked me again. Which would make a difference because I would have taken some damage. Make sure to read your cards and do your stuff. Yep. Anyways. Alright. So that was the... Oh no, we did not do the encounter. Now we go to the encounter step. And now we got to do the encounter, which is... Feral... Ra oh my goodness. I'm pretty sure the crisis thing just says I can't do anything to the main scheme. Because I'm about to say, if this comes out and I can't do anything to this, then that sucks. But, Feral Rage. Sabretooth has worked himself into a frenzy in his hunt for Kelly. You need to draw his attention away from the Senator. When defeated, Sabretooth attacks the player who defeated this scheme. Even if that player is in alter ego form. So it gets four threat added to this. And I just wanted to double check the crisis thing. It's yes. It's only from the main scheme. So that means I can still go target this. It just means I can't remove threat from that until that's taken care of. So that was the encounter. So back to my turn. We don't really have a choice here. Otherwise, we're going to lose this. So we need to bring Shadow Cat out here because she needs we need her to start. We need her to go find the senator. So we got to pay three. Three. Really wanted to keep one of these, but oh well. And that brings Shadow Cat into play. All right, so Shadow Cat has three hit points. And you notice she has the, she's an ally, and you know she has the same basic like I do. So that means she can do the same stuff that I can do. The difference being, you notice she has these little consequence, or these little stars. They're called consequence stars. What that's saying is if she does said action, after she's done doing said action, she has to take the damage equal to how many stars are in there. And then she also has the ability where she gets to ignore the guard and patrol keywords at any crisis. She got to ignore those crisis icons anyway. So let's get her to start going and uh, finding that senator so that he doesn't get knocked out. So, yep, right off the bat, we're going to have Shadow Cat exhaust to thwart a scheme. And she's going to go thwart to threat off of a scheme. So she's going to thwart to threat off of this scheme. But now she has to take a consequence damage. So she took one consequence damage for doing that. And then now Colossus is going to activate and thwart that scheme to find the senator for one, which is enough to finish that. And remember, it said, when defeated, the first player, I'm the first player, detaches Robert Kelly from the scheme and takes control of him. So I now have control of Robert Kelly. Flip this card and place it next to the main scheme. So we flip this card and place it next to the main scheme. Oh, we have to go do 2A. Let's activate 2A. Then we do that, but it doesn't matter. It's just setting up this last go to where we now need to try to knock out Sabretooth before he knocks out Robert Kelly. So Sabretooth has wounded Senator Kelly and continues to hound him. When revealed, deal each player a face-down encounter card. Oh, I forgot about that. All right. So then we flip this over, and it says, Get Robert Kelly's safety before Sabretooth finishes the job. When completed, defeat Robert Kelly. So if he gets nine threats, so how he completes this is he has to get a number of threat equal to this number up on the top. So he needs to get nine per player. So one, 
One player means he's got to get nine threat on this card. If he does, he defeats Robert Kelly. If Robert Kelly leaves play, the players lose the game. So now, where he had two conditions, it's really it's really still two conditions in order for him to win, but it's really three, because there's another way now. Because one way was, get this nine on there, which is going to defeat Robert Kelly, pulling off his main scheme, which kills Robert Kelly. Or he could knock me out. Or, remember, Robert Kelly has it on his card that anytime I don't defend against an attack, he takes the damage, which knocks out Robert Kelly, which pulls off his main scheme. So now I got to sit here and defend every single time a Robert Kelly is going to get knocked out. Which, remember, he's going to be putting threat on this, but as long as this is out, then I can't remove threat from that. So we're going to have to get busy on that. Now, this also goes into play. Robert Kelly cannot be healed by player card effects and cannot have upgrades attached. All right. After your hero defends against an attack from Sabretooth, spend two resources of any type to ready your hero. Only the player who controls Robert Kelly. So I could spend, discard two resources to basically unexhaust after defending. Problem with that is, remember my hand size is only four. So I'm probably not going to be spending those resources very often unless I'm flipping back and forth between forms. But... We shall see. All that was from me removing that. I have nothing else I want to do or can do. Oh, actually. No, no, no. No, yeah. I did not change form on my turn. I actually changed during his turn with that other card. So do I want to switch to alter ego form and get a better hand size right now? You know what? I'm going to do that. I'm going to switch to my alter ego form. Which, as a response, after switching Alter Ego form, I can shuffle a Colossus card from my discard pile back into my deck. It's the only one in there, and the reason we know it's a Colossus card is it says Colossus here, and it has his face down there. So I can shuffle that back in my deck. Uh, well, I don't draw. I was about to draw. <laughs> well, it's because I'm going to my end phase now. So I go to my end phase. I want to keep this in hand because it's going to be a way to damage, stun, confuse, do a bunch of stuff. And because I'm keeping this in hand, I draw up to my hand size of six. I got one, two, three. I was hoping to draw that. Four, five, and six. Oh, I got two of them. There we go. We're guaranteeing I was drawing that. There we go. All right. Ready all of our cards. Back to the beginning of the villain phase. This one's different. I mean, it is and it isn't. So this one adds plus one threat per number of players. But it don't do any of the other effect. Next, Sabretooth is going to activate. And I could just let him activate. Because he's just going to throw threat on here. But really, we don't want a lot of threat on there. I just realized the problem with Robert Kelly. Because it says, when an enemy resolves an undefended attack against you, Deal that damage to Robert Kelly. So that means I have to defend with Colossus. Because if I don't defend with Colossus, it, it's not where it was before where I could just choose to take the damage. Because if it's undefended, it doesn't matter. The tough only goes off when I take the damage. In this case, Robert Kelly takes the damage. And remember, I cannot play stuff on Robert Kelly. Okay, so he's initiating an attack. So we saw I drew two of them. We're going to do that armor up again. So we're interrupting. So it lets me change to hero form, which this one I'm not going to gain anything because, remember, when I switch to hero form, I give him a tough status card. I do not have a tough status card. I guess I should have left Robert Kelly taking some damage for a while. Oh, well. All right. So I'm in hero form. Can't gain any more because I only get one additional tough status card. Not can't hold more. So now... He's going to check. Am I in hero form? I am in hero form. He is going to attack. And like I just figured out, if I do not defend, then Robert Kelly is going to take the damage, which means tough means nothing to me at that point. So I am going to have to defend, which sucks because I don't... I know a card I'd put in this deck which would make this situation very, very good. It's not in here. Desperate defense. I miss you so much right now. Anyways, we know what's getting added in this deck when I build it. 
So I'm defending. Saber does two damage plus. Oh, okay. So now this was a boost, and this is another symbol. I just did. I was hoping we'd hit so we could teach it. So if you see, there's the normal boost icon down there, but now there's this star. Well, that's called a boost ability. It means go look up here and you do this before doing the damage. So it says here, oh, don't you mess me up. He might mess me up. Let's see. Discard one random card from your hand. Boo. He might mess me up. In truth, there's only two of the five cards I want. The rest I'm using as resources. As long as he don't take one of the two of the five cards. Man, really? Really, dude? Really? Since we're doing all this stuff, let's not forget that we have to heal him again. So, all right. We'll roll a dice to see which one randomly goes from my hand. One, two, three, four, five. I'll roll six. I'll re-roll. Re-roll. Five. Oh, come on. Boo! He, he, he did it. And out of all the ones I didn't want to take, it would it had to be that one. It was like two of the five, and that's the one I don't want to take. Ugh. That wasn't very nice. Stupid toad. Alright, so we did the boost ability. He still has to finish out his damage. So it was two plus now plus one. So three damage. I defended, but I have a tough, so that just absorbs that. As a hero response, I'm in hero form. We'll remove this token to add a tough to me. Actually, if I'm going to go back to... Do I want to waste it right now? I have no reason to waste... I mean, if I was going to be able to do that, I wasn't going to be going back. But we might as well go back to uh, alter ego form. So we're not going to do that. Oh, so that means I have one less tough... All right, he's going to heal for one, which he's at max, so it does not matter. And the boost doesn't matter because that wasn't a boost. All right, no minions. So we go to the encounter phase, deal ourselves an encounter card. All right, here we go. Two, oh, well, now we got a minion. So a minion comes into play. It's Avalanche. He has a, he's a one scheme, three attack, five hit points, forced response that after Avalanche attacks you, exhaust the character you control. So, boo on him. Colossus can do some damage, but not if I'm have to defend every single time. And now we have to deal with another thing, which says, attach to a minion and give it a tough status card. Otherwise, this card gains Surge. Well, we have a minion, so it's going to attach to him. What does it do to him? Attached minion gets plus five hit points. Yeah. Because we were just talking about how do we get all this damage out of here. And he's going to be tapping my guys down. Uh, uh, uh. Not happy about this at all. Alright, well, that's all we could do. So we go back to the beginning of my turn. Well, he just wrecked everything I had planned. But it doesn't really matter now, so we'll just go ahead and put this into play. It's a two cost. We're going to get rid of this armor up. But that puts this into play, which is an upgrade that attaches the Colossus. Titanium Muscles gives him plus one attack to where I can start doing some damage. But if, if I'm going to have to constantly keep defending, I just don't see that happening. But the big deal is, as a hero, when I'm in hero form, as a resource, I can exhaust this. I generate a physical resource for each tough status card on Colossus. So, basically makes it where I can sit in the four, hand size four. And not be not be too worried, maybe. I am going to switch to my alter ego form. Which, if you remember, I have a response which lets me shuffle in a Colossus card back in. Which we just have those three. We we're just talking about I need damage. So we're going to shuffle in this Steel Fist. I like that armor up, but we're just going to have to be able to switch back and forth. All right. And might as well. I'm just going to hold on to it. We dropped our hand size of six. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six. 
I found something to do some damage. All right, I'm starting to see some more stuff here to where we could possibly do some things. We drew up. Re oh, yeah, I'm not going to do anything with Shadow Cat. We're going to ready all of our cards. Go to begin the turn. Plus one threat per player. Now, Sabretooth is going to activate. Since I'm in Alter Ego form, he's going to scheme. There's nothing I can do about that. So he's going to scheme for one, two, three. That was a good card to have go on there because it was my obligation, but we don't care about the card. Remember, we only care about the boost. So because he activated, he heals for zero. He's at full anyways. Now Avalanche is going to do the same thing, but he don't get the boost card. So he activates and he's just going to scheme for one. But this thing's kind of a threat now, because it's got six of the nine, which means... Well, Kitty can do stuff about it, but I can't, so... Let's go to... Let's see, we just did... Bad Guy, Minion... So... Oh, deal an encounter, and then... Infiltration. So when revealed, I shuffle this card into my deck. This card gains... Surge. Okay. So Surge means I'm going to have to deal myself another card. And I'm just going to shuffle this 20 times without looking. And that's where it's going to be at since we can tell where it's at. And for most people, they would say, well, you need to resleeve it. No, 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 no. See, because there is... They're not taking into account that you're sleeving cards. So, I mean, I could sleeve it, but there's a reason it's got a red back. Granted, you won't be able to see it's coming up from the side, but you can, you, you would know, you would see an orange card. You would see something that looks different because they're not taking into account that everybody sleeves their cards. Now, of course, we're sleeving our cards, but... Right, I know I did more than 20, so we'll just do a countdown from five without looking. One, two, three, four, five. Oh. I take that into account. Well, that just sucks because it's going to get rid of a support, which I have no supports. Or it's going to get rid of an ally. I remember the card. Sorry, I should have read it out loud. It. I remember it, from, it happened to me during Shadow Cat's play. Which sucks because that means Shadow Cat's going. <laughs> She's going. This is happening. But I look at this as this is letting you know when something's about to come up. And the reason I look at that is with the Adam Warlock. Because Adam Warlock, you could see when that's coming up. So you can know when something's going to hit. So if it's on the top of the deck, you can know it's not going to boost or it's not going to do something with the cards that came with the Adam Warlock deck, uh, the, the Cosmic Entities. So I, it's just the way I look at that. So anyways, that card said do a surge. So that means we have to do another encounter card. So we do ourselves another encounter card. And then now we have to do what the encounter card is, which is another side scheme. Oh, we ran into this last time. But I don't remember because I didn't really mess with it. It's a two. It's got hinder two per player. So when revealed, place two threat here per player. So it's got four threat on here. The victory... It just means don't put it in a discard pile unless you're playing in the campaign and it gives you some victory points. When defeated, this allows me to heal Robert Kelly. The problem is, yes, I want to heal him, but I need to get rid of this because it's going to be accelerating this scheme, an additional one every turn. So if I don't get rid of this, this is going to... It will end me. Let's be real. It will end me. Sorry about that bad glare. Um, light's still messed up and I just couldn't keep filming at the shop because it was too noisy. All right, that was the encounter step, so we just go to the beginning of my turn. All right, well, I have no halter ego stuff, so we might as well flip to... This really sucks that he's got 14 hit points for this scenario. So he's got 14 hit points, but it doesn't matter because he can't take the damage. Because if it's an undefended attack, it goes to Robert Kelly. So having 14 hit points means nothing in this. 
Anyways, flipped as a response. I get two, or not a two, but I get a second tough status card. We're going to play this card. And remember, I have this hero resource, Titanium Muscles here, that says as a hero resource, I can exhaust this card to generate a physical resource for each tough status card on Colossus. So I got two tough statuses. So that makes it to where I get two of the resources that pays for this. And it gives me Iron Will, which is another upgrade for Colossus. Gives me plus one thwart. And then as a hero response, after a tough status card is discarded from Colossus, I get to draw a card. We're going to have Colossus make a basic attack against Avalanche. We're going to attack with Colossus. We're going to attack Avalanche for two. He gets plus one attack from this Titanium Muscle still has. So he does three damage. To Avalanche. Then we're going to play Bulletproof Protector here. It's a zero cost event. I have to discard a, stat, a tough status card, or tough status. So I'm going to discard this tough. And it lets me, I can give myself two tough status cards or ready my hero. Well, hold up. We just got rid of a tough status. So what? I have some triggers here. First one on my trigger is going to be this one. As a hero response, after a tough status card is discarded from Colossus, I can exhaust this to put a tough status card back on him. But now all the uses are gone, so it goes back on here. But it puts that tough status back on him. Then also, as a hero response, after a tough status card is discarded from Colossus, draw a card. Oh man, it's going to make a Shadow Cat. Yeah. We already did it. Let's do it. I get my studio here. It's my alter ego. It's a support. So true, it's a support. I can just put it into play. Because remember, because I remember this one, it it's an ally or a support. I don't have to be an alter ego to play it, but I do have to be an alter ego in order to use it. Well, that just let's draw the card. I'll figure that out in a second. Now we got to finish out the rest of this one, which is either give myself two tough status cards, which I can't hold no more. So we're just going to do the other one to ready my hero. Now we're going to exhaust Colossus to attack again with another basic attack. We're going to attack Avalanche. This time we're going to do Made of Rage. Zero cost event, hero interrupt. When you make a basic attack, made a basic attack, discard a tough status card from your hero. Discard a tough status card from my hero. Oh, we got some responses again. I get to draw a card, which gives me Bulletproof Protector. And we're going to trigger the last one on that one, which is going to give me back a tough status card. All right, let's finish the rest of this now. I get plus six attack for that attack, and that attack gains overkill. Overkill means any extra damage, any excess damage that is dealt to Avalanche, since that's who I chose, can, can kill over into the villain. So, we have six plus two is seven, eight, plus one is nine. So, he's got seven. That's enough to KO him. And then we had nine, so we have two excess damage, which will spill over into Sabretooth. So I know that card's coming up, and even if I didn't know it was right there, I would put this into play anyways. I'm going to pay one to put this into play. And really, I mean, it'd be cool to keep it, but I've really just got it there for whenever that red card comes up, I have to discard a support or an ally. I need Shadow Cat to start cleaning up some of this mess, so that support's there to get rid of that. I really like this every time a tough status card is discarded, draw a card. That's really good.
as long as I can keep putting tough statuses on me. And it makes sense they gave him that, because I was thinking four hand size, yeah, that's, I get why they did it, but he's not doing enough damage to keep him down into that, but now it makes sense, because if you have this out, that's like having a hand size of five, possibly more, as you saw, I've drawn more than that this turn. Okay, we're going to Exhaust Shadow Cat. Normally I would go after this, which she can, because she has the ability to ignore this crisis. Because remember, this thing, this thing says we can't remove anything from this unless this is gone. But actually, now that I'm looking at it, because I'm not going to have Shadow Cat for very long, and eventually I'm going to have to take that down. Yeah, if I don't get rid of this, it's just canceling out the little bit she's doing. So we're just going to go ahead and get rid of this. Plus, I can let Robert, if he heals a little bit, I can let Robert Kelly take a little bit more damage. So let's go ahead and do this card. Bulletproof Protector. Zero cost event. Hero action. Discard a tough status card from my hero. Discarded that. We don't have any other triggers other than this one. So let me draw a card. All right, and then I ready my hero. And then we're going to exhaust Colossus to thwart that medical emergency for one, two th threat, which defeats it. When defeated, heal two damage from Robert Kelly. So, Putting him back at six, because now he could take some damage, hopefully. I forgot to give Shadowcat her Consequence Star of damage. I'm going to go to my end phase. I'm going to discard all three. I kind of wanted to do the four damage to Sabretooth. But we're getting so dangerous. I don't think four damage, especially if that's going to be that card. Yeah, it's going to be that card and... So it mean I'd have one card left in hand. It's just not... Not worth it. So we're going to discard everything. Because we also know we're about to have a poop card in hand. Matter of fact... If I would have only discarded... The ones I, I was going to keep these... I would just draw on those two. And yeah, it'd just been poop, 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 poop. Either way. Alright. So we go ahead and draw four cards. We already know what one of these is going to be. Oh, I forgot about the double energies. I guess that wouldn't have been as bad. Oh, we do have Colossus and... Okay. And we have... Well, I mean, that's good, but I'm still going to have a crap turn. But anyways, here we go. So because this came up, after this card enters your hand, discard an ally or a support you control. So I have to discard the support. And then this basically sticks in my hand until um, I can discard it from my hand at the end of the player phase like any other card. But we already passed past that. So it's just kind of a waste in my hand until then. So we ready our cards. Go back to the top. It's going to add one threat to the scheme. Sabretooth is going to activate. I'm in hero form. He's going to attack. I'm going to choose not to defend. I want to say this is the first time I've ever got to play one of these. So here we go. So he's attacking. Doing two. Three damage. And so I don't forget about his heal. So he's doing three damage. I'm going to play this card as a two cost event. Hero interrupt. When an enemy attacks, he attacks. He's attacking. So, we'll use, I don't know, this. Either one. We're going to pay this to pay for it. Two cost event. Team up means you have to have Colossus and Shadow Cat. I have Colossus and Shadow Cat in play. And this is awesome if you got someone else playing Shadow Cat. Max one per deck. Hero interrupt. When an enemy attacks, prevent all the damage from that attack. So we're preventing all the damage from that attack. And then deal four damage to the attacking enemy. 
So Sabretooth's going to take four damage, taking him to seven. Of course, my turn's going to be kind of doo-doo, but that's what just happened. And then now Sabretooth's going to heal for two. Oh, wrong direction. Much as I'd like it to go that direction. All right. Now we got to do the encounter phase. Please just don't mess me around too much. Caught off guard. When revealed, discard an upgrade or a support you control. If no cards were discarded this way, this card gains surge. Well, I have an upgrade, so it's not going to gain surge. So I have to get rid of either my iron will or my titanium muscles. I mean, being able to thwart seems really good, so I might have to keep this. As much as I like having the extra attack, I just... Bleh, not going to happen. So there that goes. And then we go back to the beginning of my turn. Which is going to be a pretty short turn. We're just going to have Shadow Cat make the final sacrifice. And remove two threat from there. But then she's KO'd. We're going to thwart for two. Because remember, he can't go after that one because that crisis icon. We're going to go to my end phase. I will discard this. We're going to keep this in hand. So we draw up to my hand size of four. One, two, three. So we ready our character and our stuff. Beginning of the turn, it's going to add a threat to the scheme. I am in hero form, so he is going to attack. Yeah, I think for sake i'm just gonna let robert kelly eat it in the face so much i'd like to draw another card don't think i'm gonna so i'm a you know what this is what i was talking about in the shadow cat one i'm doing it anyways i found nothing in here it says i have complete control of robert kelly he does not control does not count against my ally limit and cannot have player cards so i just can't attach player cards Robert Kelly cannot be healed by car, by player card effects. It cannot have upgrades. Got that. Other than that, he's my ally. I can do whatever the hell I want with him. So what I'm going to do is he's going to defend. And it's because I don't want to take a chance of getting stunned or something stupid. So Robert Kelly said he's going to take it in the face anyways. I'm just going to have him defend. So two... Zero, so two damage. And now Sabretooth heals for two. Of course, he's getting right back up there because I needed to start. But I had to, I had to clean up all this mess. I didn't have a choice. Of course, I just realized I forgot about something, but that's fine. We've already done it. Uh, encounter phase. Which is a condition attachment. Attach to Sabretooth. Sabretooth gains stalwart. This character cannot be stunned or confused. Hero action spent. Oh, that's lame because I was about to stun and confuse him. Out of all the things you could have drawn. So back to the beginning of my turn. Alright, so then let me do what I wanted to do anyway. So we're just going to go ahead and have Colossus. Get rid of this Feral Rage. So Sabretooth attacks the player who defeated this scheme, even if that player is in alter ego form. So he's going to attack Colossus. Thing is, I can't defend, so it's going to be undefeated, so that means Kelly's going to take the damage. I'm playing Mutant Protectors. It says, as a hero interrupt when an enemy attacks. Put an X-Men ally into play from your hand. Exhausted and declare it the defender for this attack. I can only do it if I have the X-Men trait, which I do. I have to pay for it with this. So, 
puts them into play, and I'm putting Polaris into play. She has three hit points. And it says as a response, after Polaris enters play, give an X-Men character a tough status card. So I can either give it to Colossus or Polaris. So she's about to have to take it in the face. We're going to put it on her. And then tap her and she has to take the attack. So Sabretooth's attacking for two. Oh, what is this? Attach this card to Sabretooth. So basically he's got plus one strength and now, oh, well. Well, that kind of sucks because it didn't matter that I put the um, toughness on her because it's going to go through it anyways. She's just going to get knocked out. Yep. Them's the break. She just don't know it's going to work like that because he gets plus one attack. So his attack is... And I'll show why here in a second. So he's getting two, three attack. He don't get no more boost cards because that was his boost card. So he's getting three attack, but this also gave him piercing. Piercing says, as soon as the damage is, if there's toughness on there, it removes the toughness, and then it deals the damage. So it's doing three damage to Polaris, which KOs her. Well, that wasn't very nice. I'll keep it. So we draw to my hand size of four. One. Two. Three. Four, and of course I draw another one. Should have just went ahead and did it. Ready all my cards. Adds a threat. That really messed me up, not getting that stalwart right at that time when I was about to stun and confuse him because then I could have went to alter ego form, didn't carry, wasn't going to scheme, flip back. Ugh, yep. I didn't so much care about the stun, it was just that confused, shutting down that confused. Uh, oh, what am I doing? That added there, he's activating. I gotta choose if I'm defending. I mean, I don't really have a choice. Yep, I really don't have a choice. I have to defend with Colossus, because I can't take a chance. He's only got four, two, three. Odds are he's gonna take a damage, so I have to defend with Colossus. So, two, three. Oh, tough ain't gonna matter. That's, oh my goodness. Well, I'm still defending, so I won't go to Robert Kelly. It just means now I can absorb that 14. So, yep. So, two, three, four. Gets rid of the tough first. Now, I still, it still says, after a tough status card is discarded from Colossus, well, what Piercing says is it discards the tough before damage is dealt. So, I still get to draw a card for that tough going away. I don't guess it's shown. Just drew this. I was trying. I was so anxious to see. Does that help me any? I think I'm still stuck in the same boat I was in. Oh, I just realized I forgot. I'm just putting that same one back on top. I forgot I had this one off to the side. So when I drew up to my hand size of four, I drew four new ones. So really, that one would have been there. Yeah. So that one would have been there because, yeah, because I'd be at my hand size of four. Yep. So I'm defending. Got rid of the tough. Now I draw that card. So that ain't going to help me. I was like, actually, that helps me a lot, but it does not. It would have gave me. It would have gave me enough to be able to do some stuff, but I don't think I have enough now to do it. Oh yeah, because I would have knocked out Robert Kelly. All right. He also heals up to his full. Lovely. And then our encounter card, which it, oh my goodness. That, that's game. Because <laughs> ah! what this means... Well, we'll go ahead and read through it. When revealed, reveal your set-aside Nemesis minion and put it into play engaged with you. The Juggernaut comes into play engaged with me. He is a one scheme for attack. Yeah, this is this is over. Stalwart can't do anything against him. He starts with toughness on him. He's 
Gonna get eight hit points. Yeah, that's... Oh, them's the breaks. I was looking forward to playing him too. Oh, well. All right. Well, reveal your set-aside Nemesis side scheme and put it into play. Which is... When revealed, discard each tough status card from each friendly character. Well, I don't have any anyways. Place two threat here for each tough status card discard this way. Good thing I didn't have any, I guess. And what this symbol does, as long as it's there, is anytime a boost happens, which means that too, I was... No, because that's not a boost. So anytime a boost happens, it adds an additional boost. So it means he's going to do an additional damage, scheme a little bit extra. And then we shuffle these cards in, which are his other three cards. Oh my goodness. I was thinking, man, maybe, maybe I can pull this back. And then Shadows of the Past happens. It just kicks you right in the jibblies. All right, and these shuffle in, which this deck's so small, that means most likely some stuff's going to get attached to Juggernaut. Because I think that's what those are, is Juggernaut attachments. And then the rest of it just says if the Nemesis would have not got put into play in that way, then um, that card gains Surge, which means do another card. Oh my goodness. I thought I was bringing it back. Let's be fair, Sabertooth's sitting at 13. I think that's it, but we'll try to figure it out. All right, why did that happen? That was my encounter. The one time I needed it to be a heal or... Man. Wow, and we don't even have... Yeah, both schemes are still in there, which means I can't even risk going into Ultra Ego form. All right, start of my turn. Uh, I just got to hope for a zero because we're going to do this. Because I can't go into Ultra Ego form because then I guarantees he pulls off the scheme, which knocks out Robert Kelly. So we're going to do the three to get rid of this thing so that he can be stunned or whatever now. Yeah, I don't see it, but we'll play it out and see what happens. I mean, I could get lucky and it's zero damage against Robert Kelly and then Colossus blocks against Juggernaut. Uh, I guess there's some defense cards in the deck. And since these aren't being useful to me. And I can't discard them all because if my deck runs out, Another encounter card happens, which means there's so many things that say Sabertooth attack, Sabertooth attack. So I got to keep one of these. Might as well keep this one. And if I survive it, then maybe I can hit up Sabertooth. And confuse and stun him. So discard Professor X, keeping this one card in hand. We're going to draw three. Hoping for, praying for a miracle. No. Because none of these can be played during their turn. So it all comes down to that attack on Robert Kelly. Because we're about to... Because I'm going to have to save Colossus to defend against Juggernaut. Because that's a guaranteed four. Which is enough to knock out Robert Kelly. Yep, I don't see nothing else. All right, here we go. Adding a threat. Putting it at eight of the nine. And that was the reason I couldn't go into the Ultra Ego because then if they scheme, they just get it. So, Sabertooth's attacking. I can't defend because I'm going to have to defend against Juggernaut and I have no way to do both of them. So, I just got to hope because he's doing two. And I guess if I would have seen that, I should have done that over that. Now... I gotta hope it's a zero. And it's not. Reveal this card. You are stunned. When revealed, you are stunned. If you are already stunned, take two damage. So it would have stunned me. I mean, it don't matter. It would have stunned me, which stun says next time I would attack, I'd take. Uh, instead, just get rid of the stun. But then. Two. Three, four, five damage since I didn't defend. So even if I would have defended, it still would have stunned me. 
It would have done five damage to Colossus. But then Juggernaut has to attack. I can't defend. I have nothing in hand to stop the attack. So then he knocks out Robert Kelly for four damage. Well, I was looking forward to playing that one. But I kind of figured protection decks typically don't do a lot of... That was another one of those Steel Fists. It was just that bad timing on that. I could have went into it, but yeah. Coulda, woulda, shoulda. Can't do it anyways. All right. Well, that was a loss. We'll clean this up. And go into the Cyclops. Mitch, man. Maybe I should just do Rhino. Maybe these flavors is too much because it always just comes down to I can't... I can't stop Robert Kelly from taking the hits. Whereas like when it's just Rhino, I can sit there and choose to take the hits. But we're keeping it because of the flavor, so that was the reason we did it. But, all right. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.